You know what time it is? Easter time. So if you don't have bun and cheese, don't invite people in, please. You have to have bun and cheese in your house. And luckily for you, I created an Easter idea playlist. So check that out. And I'm going to be adding to this Easter playlist how to prepare the hard work bread. You feel me, I say? Because religious purposes, you know, after Good Friday, there should be absolutely no cooking in the household. So my mom, my bread colors, we're ready for the baking, are you? So without further delay, let me take you right into preparing this Jamaican hard dough bread. So forward, let me show you what I want. So to start the bread off, we're going to need a tablespoon and a half of instant dry yeast with three ounces of lukewarm water. And that will activate the yeast over 15 minutes. So we're going to mix this up properly so that we don't have any traces of the yeast. I'm going to sift three cups of all-purpose flour into my bowl. Then I'm going to add to that two tablespoons of granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoon of salt, and I'm just going to mix in everything to incorporate them. To that, I'm going to add three tablespoons of my vegan butter. Right? This is the package that it comes from. I'm going to go straight in with my hands, combining the flour and the butter to get a light breadcrumb consistency. I'm going to do this for about 40 seconds to a minute, there about. Get your hands, don't be shy, go straight in. Just going to rub your fingers together with the butter and the flour. And that's the consistency that we're looking for. Nice breadcrumb looking type flour. And this is what your yeast should look like 15 minutes later. Foamy, so you know it's really activated. Gonna add to that six ounces of almond milk. So in total we should have a measurement of nine ounces of liquid. Mix that in. I'm gonna add that directly into my dry ingredients. Mix that in, so lift, press, lift, press, lift, press. Clean all the sides of that bowl. And this is what you should have, right? So you can use the same vegan butter and rub that in your bowl, or you can just use some cooking spray. Spray the dough as well, turn it over, rub it around. I'm gonna wrap this and allow it to proof for about an hour and we're going to double it size so stay tuned let me show you how i'm going all right so this is what it looks like as you can see increase a lot in size i'm just going to deflate this add a bit of flour on there on the surface as well Try and roll this now into a ball. Alright, so you see this rough part? This is going to be the bottom of our brick. Alright, so we got that into a nice ball. So just put your hands on there. From the center in, we're going to roll it out. I'm using here a 12 by 4 baking pan. I use it for my bun and breads. And if you want to purchase something similar to this, I will leave a link in the description box below. Just gonna add some spray to that. And a bit of all purpose flour. And just dust that around. Just like that. Put that right in there. So gently tap it in and ensure that it's sealed in all four corners. Gonna wrap this again and allow it to proof for an additional 10 to 20 minutes. So this is what we look like after 20 minutes. And if you realize, it rise about half the way. Gonna get some of that same almond milk. Gonna add a bit to that. 
we just brush some of that almond milk on top just so we get that beautiful color on our loaf. I'm going to pop this in our preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 25 to 30 minutes after which I'll show you what it looks like. Give it one more coating of that milk just to get that perfect color on top. Pop that back in the oven for about 7 more minutes and we should be good to go. Fresh out the oven. And there you have it, hard dough bread made easy here on Morristan Cooking It. Once again, thank you very much for watching and do remember to hit that subscribe button for more amazing videos like these. How to clean and season your fish. I purchased this fish at a local supermarket. I asked them to clean the fish for me. However, I told them to leave the tail on. Do not clip the tail off because when you clip the tail off of the fish, it just makes it look smaller. Right? And I like the look of the tail for presentation wise. So, because sometimes they clip it too low like that, you don't want that. Well, that's for me at least. For those of my international friends who may be afraid of the head of the fish, this is how we actually have it in Jamaica whole like that, right? So, how to check for perfect fish? This video is going to be very detailed. So I'm going to show you how to check for perfect fish, right? Ensure that when, you're, when you go to the supermarket and you're choosing a fish, the eyes should be nice and bright. You see how nice and bright the eyes are? However, if the eyes look something like this, which is the back of the eyes, by the way, do not buy that fish. Chances are, it's going bad if the eyes look like this. Mine doesn't look like that, you know. The reason why this is like this is like I try to turn the eyeball over. So that's why I see it. I'm just giving you an example. So once the eyes look bright like that, that's a perfect fish to get like that. You don't want that. That fish is going bad. Another way to check if you have good fish, you check to see if the skin of the fish is firm. If you try to pierce your finger in and it just burst, you know the fish is going bad. What the, the butcher does when you go there, you can ask them to clean the fish. But trust me, you're gonna have to clean this when you get home because they never do a good job. I ask them to cut the fin off and stuff. They scale the fish but not that much, right? They said they got the fish as well. But as you can see, I still have a lot of stuff going on in the fish. So now I'm gonna show you how to properly clean the fish. They need a knife and a scissors. When you're descaling the fish, you scale, you scrape towards the head of the fish. Because if you scrape like this, you're not gonna get anything off. There, you see that? Just smooth. It's like you're, you're, you're patting down the scales. Alright, listen. This, we have some scales here. Listen to that. Nothing is coming off. When you scrape towards the head now, you're getting all of the scales off. And look right there. How many scales there are. Again, scrape towards the head. Ensure that when you reach these parts, you get the tip of your knife and you put it as close as possible to remove all of that scale. Work your way down to the head. Ensure to lift up the fin, clean under it because you have scale all around. So I said you can ask your butcher to clean it for you, but chances are they won't do a perfect job. They want any scale in your food. I know I don't. So I always go back over and look how much scale I'm getting off this fish right now. Right, we're at the head now. Right here at the gill, you still have scale right here. You just hold it in screen. And look. So these are fresh red snapper. I got these fresh. Ensure that the entire work surface is clear of all dishes and stuff like that because I guarantee you, you're gonna have a lot of scale flying all over the place. So that you have to bleach and sanitize that area properly so as to avoid flies. If you're not a fan of the fish head, you can buy kingfish, which has like one big bone, so you just locate that in the center, and you remove it. Or you can buy fish that has already been filleted. All right, on the inside of the fish, you wanna scrape, get out these things from the bone. Okay, so now in the head part of the fish, you open that up, and if you look here, you see like the gill side 
like the tongue of the fish, the bone and stuff, you just remove that like that. Have the inside nice and clean. Clean your fish with fresh cold water. I'm gonna run about three slices across the belly of the fish. Not too deep. Flip that around and do the same thing. Cut my tail. Because if, if the butcher had done it, he would have cut it like all the way down here. I don't want that. It's gonna clip it at the end right there. We still have some of the tail for presentation, right? So I put these slices in there. Two main reasons why I slice the fish like that. One, so I can get the excess season into the flesh of the, the fish and realize that it's not fully pierced through because you don't want to cut it all the way through to the belly. Then the fish is going to break up when you're frying or cooking it, right? As well as for when we're frying the fish, the fish doesn't curl up, it just stays flat by us putting those slices in the fish. If you have lemon or lime, you can go ahead and use it. I'm going to be using an orange and some vinegar to wash my fish. Alright, so squeeze the orange in the gut of the fish. Just use that. Wash and scrub it. To cut away as much of the rawness as possible. Go over to the head. And scrub the entire body of the fish with the lime, lemon or orange. Just rinse it off with some ice cold water. You're gonna get a paper towel or if you have a nice clean rag that doesn't shred the fabric, you can use that to pat dry your fish. So we pat dry our fish. Get out that excess water, open it up. Pat dry the inside just the same. It's nice and dry. Alright, so now for the seasoning for the fish. I'm gonna go in with all purpose seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. I'll leave in the description box down below the quantity needed to season your fish. Just gonna mix that all together. Gonna start from the inside. So just open that up, sprinkle that seasoning. And be generous with it. Cause you want this fish to be flavorful right through. Careful cause there's, there are bones in it. So rub that in. All the way in the head part of the fish. But the outside of the fish now, you get those slices, it drizzle some of that in there, all over. Rub that in. Flip that around and repeat. Spread that over. Mop up all of that. So now that the fish has been seasoned, I'm going to show you how to make the excavish. So I want to start off with some scotch bonnet pepper. I have two scotch bonnet here. That's going to allow the wash and everything. That's going to cut those into circles. It's very hot. So if you want to reduce the heat, just kind of remove some of the seeds. I'm going to go in with a carrot. Like this. Alright, we're gonna julienne our carrots, right? You get them like that, not too thick, not too thin. And julienne our long strips, right? So that's what we're looking for. Nice julienne strips. And we're gonna go in with our onion. So we're gonna cut these into circles. About this thick. So that when it cooks and it shrinks, they don't break up. You want it for presentation, right? When you reach out to the final piece, you just lay it down flat on your board. Run your knife. Lift and cut. Here you go. And lastly, our bell peppers. And we're going to use multicolor. I'm just going to use a piece of each color, not too much. So I have a green here. A red and yellow. 
Again, we're going to cut these into julienne strips. Now I'm going to show you how to make the escafiche garnish, aka the pickling. So first up, turn on our stove to max. And we're going to add vinegar, granulated sugar. That sugar helps to even out the tanginess of the vinegar. I'm going to go in with some pimento seeds. I have a few grains here. This will help to add flavor to the pickle. Next up, we're going to add the scotch bonnet peppers. So we'll add those directly at the bottom to get that heat from the bottom up. We'll remove a few of these peppers because I'm telling you, they're real spicy. So to that, I'm going to add my carrots. And we add the carrots right after the scotch bonnet because the carrots take longer to cook, right? So we add those directly after the pepper. Pepper first, you get all of that spiciness out. Let that soften for about 30 seconds or so. Then I'm going to go in with my onions. And then to that, <clears throat> whoa, I'm telling you, have your windows open because the spice from the scotch bonnet and that um, <coughs> vinegar, trust me, pardon, it's very harsh. Be prepared people, my voice is changing, <coughs> it's spice but trust me, it's worth it at the end. Whoa, that's some strong pepper, I believe it's a brown pepper that's doing this to me. Let this simmer for about a minute and we turn off our stove. Because you don't want to overcook them, you need them to be nice and crunchy. So we turn that off and then we we'll mix these around. Allow this to sit and then salt out the fried fish. Gonna add to my frying pan two garlic cloves and a scotch bonnet pepper. Let's break that, drop it in, and in with our oil. So about a cup and a half of oil. So we'll put the garlic and the scotch bonnet in the oil to burn off. The garlic helps to cut away that rawness from the fish. Also the pepper and the garlic brings flavor to the oil. We're just going to let that heat up for about 5 minutes. And then we're going to add our fish. So now our oil is hot, we're just going to add our fish. for three and a half minutes on each side or until nice and crisp. So as you can see the fish is still lying flat and nice right? So that's a result of us slicing the fish across the body. Then remove the fish and set it to drain. A little bit of the pickle on here. Provide like a bed. I'm gonna go in with my fish. Pour some of that vinegar on there. Whoa. Let that soak through your fish. Beautiful. Just add the pickle on there. And there you have it. Escovish red snapper fish. Made easy here on Mars Time Cooking It. You never know how could have baked no? Alright? Watch how that bunny go turn up and then I'll go burn up. For the kitchen, you show now if you deal with it. First thing we're gonna start off with Guinness. Then molasses. Browning for colour. You know the thing we need the bun looking nice and radiant. Of course, vanilla. Oh honey, what you there? We throw some butter into that. Make it nice and glossy, and of course, some brown sugar make the thing sweet. You know what I say? Leave this on low heat and allow the butter to melt for about five minutes, then put to cool. Going in with our all purpose flour, we sift this to prevent lumping. Now we're gonna add our spices straight into our flour. First up, we have ground ginger. We have ground nutmeg, 
salt, mixed spice, baking powder, and cinnamon powder. We're going to add those right in and mix to incorporate all our dry ingredients. Orange marmalade, raisins, and mixed peels. We're going to mix those in and get them nice and coated with the flour. So here I'm adding in lime zest to cut away the rawness from our eggs. We just squeeze some of the juice just the same with that and set that aside. So at this point you would grease your buntings and set those aside just the same. So here I'm going in with my Guinness mixture. I'm going to add this gradually while blending. Gradually add in your eggs. Add the remainder of your Guinness mixture and continue to blend until all the dry flour is combined and you should have something looking just like this. Look how smooth and creamy that is. Gonna dump that right into a grease bun pan. Gonna bake this at 350. 50 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour, then prepare our glaze. For the glaze, you'll need water, honey, coconut oil. It's gonna allow this to boil for about a minute or two, then turn the heat off and set that aside to cool. Look at that. Perfect. Once it's not running, your bun is ready to go. Now we're just going to glaze the bun to give it that nice sheen. Give this video a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing here on Morris Time Cooking It. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I was here and I have a half tin of cheese and this is the processed cheddar cheese. This is a processed cheddar cheese and this is the one we use in Jamaica. It's called a tasty cheese and it's an ideal cheese for your bun and cheese for Easter, see? And I thought to myself, I want to show you guys how to cut the cheese because follow me and I'll show you what up. Before I show you how to cut the I have our stuff prep up for Escovish. I have a video out on all of these planting as well. And of course, my fish are right there. You see me? As I said, I have a half a cheese right here, right? And I started to cut the cheese already. And I thought, why not show you guys how to get that done? So, first off, you want a nice clean cloth, or you can use some paper towel, damp paper towel, right? Have that right here. And then you need a chef's knife. I don't I wouldn't suggest using a serrated edge or a bread knife a chef knife is the way to go so before you start you want to get the knife nice and clean right as I said before a lot of persons when they're cutting their cheese they would just go ahead and cut it like this I'm gonna show you how not how people normally cut their cheese so persons will just cut it like this so let me cut this half is already cut I'm just gonna cut this right now right here nice clean cut release wipe right this is very important because you don't want the knife to stick so we have that down part cut this one into two again this is best done when the cheese is refrigerated right so you get this because when the cheese is fresh out the can then it's too soft to work with so have it refrigerated before you cut it so there you go so we have four nice slices. So now, this is how the typical person would cut their cheese. And this is how I used to cut my cheese and I never used to get the mess out of my cheese. I used to cut it like this. So you see that triangular shape? I used to cut my cheese like this. Boom. And then you get a big chunk and the cheese is very uneven and no one is gonna get the fullness of the cheese. Instead of doing that, what we do now, you have it like that 
where you turn it flat down like this and then you're gonna cut the cheese like this so you get those nice even triangle wipe the knife you can do a few cuts and then you wipe your knife you see proper you have nice even slices of cheese and that way everybody gets you know you have the household of the kids who are always complaining oh why him or she gets more cheese than I did no man then you can't complain again because all the cheese is now on the same level and I'm gonna release this video right away so that you and your family can enjoy your cheese and don't have to waste it so again again we don't cut it like this we turn it to the side and we cut it like that you know get the most out of your cheese this holiday there you have it how to cut your cheese for Easter and have no waste you know what I'm saying we just line them out nicely on a plate just line them out nicely and everybody can just grab a slice of cheese and be on their merry little way so with this slice of cheese right here I got 30 slices of cheese I hope you didn't cut your cheese as yet if so if you buy an next cheese because Easter Sunday is right around the corner do your cheese like this and I guarantee you you'll save a lot more cheese and it will spread across for the family you know what I say so how to cut your cheese like a pro at home one Oh, one. You feel the message? Big up on yourself and happy Good Friday, happy Easter when it comes. No flow to you and your family. So, until next time, see you chopping on the gravel and one big up on yourself.